Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Success at Supper Time. Wow. Hey, Tate, thanks for joining us. One body, Mr. Wealthy, Grand Rising Collective, my good friends from the Big Apple. And I saw what you say, Bebe, was on the line from Mississippi. Thank you so much for being here. And maybe just type in where you're watching from. Love to know where everybody's coming from as we talk about our topic today. As you know, our topics are always based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. And uh, I pick our topics based on what I see going on. And today was election day. And I was talking with some young people and, you know, about the vote and not just about things in general. And one of the things I got a sense of was this, Desire, desire from Virginia. Thank you, Varia. Thank you, Varia. One of the things I got a sense of was this, a tendency to this group of young men to, to quit and to say it's too hard and to throw in the towel. And I thought for a moment, I'm like, man, one of the keys to success is persistence. You will not find a successful person anywhere on the planet who will tell you that you will become successful without being persistent, without pursuing your goals, no matter what. Sometimes things can really get tricky, 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 and you have to hang in there. Thomas Edison said, the key to success is to try one more time. And to keep a good attitude, Winston Churchill said, success is moving from failure to failure without losing your attitude, your positive attitude. So this idea of persistence, this really comes on the chapter 11 of the 12 Universal Law of Success, the law of persistence. And there's a, a scriptural basis for it. And we all know it. We get the message from Bible school and churches and whatnot. And and you always hear, seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be answered. But it never says how long. How long do you keep seeking? How long do you keep knocking? How long do you keep asking? You know, what, what do you call it? The terrible twos. I like to call it the terrific twos. When kids are two or three years old and they start looking at the world from a perspective of wonder and all their questions are like, how, why, how, why? And that sense of wonder, that sense of, of, of amazement is critical. If you wanna know one key to longevity, one key to growing, don't say growing old, to growing mature, to growing wiser is wonder and curiosity. So this idea of persistence is critical to success because success, you have to take success. I think um, one of the greats, he said, power concedes nothing except to power. Success concedes nothing except to work. The only place that success comes before work is in the dictionary. And so persistence is the key to hanging in there. Persistence is the key to achieving your success. I guarantee you that anything that you have failed at doing, when you look back, you say, man, I wish I had continued. If I had thrown one more blow, if I'd gone one more round, if I'd made one more call. Without persistence, you will not be successful. And I'm, I'm not, you know, saying negative things or giving you negative persistence. I'm just saying, just as the law of gravity, when you jump out of this window, the law of gravity says you're going to fall to the ground. Now, maybe it won't happen one day, <laughs> okay? But I think pretty much if you look at the law of gravity, it's like, don't jump out of the window. 
Similarly, with persistence, when we look at the law of persistence, sometimes people do get results. As they say, sometimes people are able to reap from a field where they have not sown, like the lottery. That, that's a good example. Many times lottery winners get a large sum of money and numerous studies have said that a significant percentage of them, over five to seven years, the money is gone. So why? Because they may not have developed the consciousness. Now, sometimes just terrible things happen. They just do. But if you don't develop the consciousness that's consistent with that which you're seeking, last week we talked about, and you may want to watch this, it's on YouTube. And it's a lecture I gave called, I Meet No One But Me. And it says that anything that happens in your life is a result of the vibrations you send out. So if you keep meeting mean people who lie, cheat, and steal, there's something inside that you're radiating. A pickpocket I once represented in New York said he knew whose pocket to pick. He could tell by the way a person moved, by the way a person's physical mannerisms they would be an easy mark and he could pick their pocket and they wouldn't resist so how do we use this now to attract into our space that we desire persistence is the key reverend ike said after sacrifice comes blessings that you must put in the work first and the persistence with which you demonstrate your pursuit of your goals determines the possibility and probability that you will achieve them. So how can you develop your skill of persistence? Ricky Young says, persistence is the bridge between thought and accomplishment. That willingness to go the extra mile. So let's look at some of the things you can do to be more more persistent. Well, number one, you got to have clearly defined goals. It's hard to be persistent about vague things. You know, for example, when a person says, I'm persistent about pursuing happiness. Okay, well, what does that mean today? What do you do right now in pursuit of happiness? But once you break your vision and your goal down, into, you might say, specific, measurable, set in advance, realistic, cover a certain time period concepts, you can get, you can get it done. So one of the main obstacles to persistence is lack of clearly defined goals. The most expensive GPS is worthless unless you can put in a destination. So lack of clearly defined goals. Number two, Inability to break complex goals down into doable chunks. One of the great Chinese masters said, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So beautiful, what's the next thing you do? Put one more step ahead. And after that, one more step. And so persistence is being willing to do it one more time, to make one more call to go one more round. Whatever your job right now, whatever your job, whatever your business, persistence is the key to your success. If you're bucking for a promotion, then you need to be persistent in doing the things that your boss respects and will reward you for. If you're in your own business and you wanna up your game and you wanna generate more income, then you have to be persistent in doing the things necessary to get desired results. Third key, be surrounded by wrong people. You see, persistence is a vibration. When we say seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open, ask and it shall be answered. When you're persistent, you are creating a vibration, a desire. The level of your desire is the measure of that vibration between you and that that you want to accomplish. If you permit people who are not on the same accord, who are not in, on, in one mind with you, 
to come into your space, they can undermine your success efforts. So clearly defined goals will help you be more persistent. The ability to break your goals down into doable chunks so that you can take one step at a time, at a time will help you be more persistent. Surrounding yourself with like-minded people. You know, the power of the mastermind is so awesome. When you have a group of people who are like-minded, who believe in what you're doing, when you get a little shaky, and we all have doubt. Even the master teacher on the cross, he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? So doubt is natural, but cannot be overcome by doubt. When you have people around you who are not on one accord, they can stimulate doubt. And finally, to realize that failure is just a, a dress rehearsal for success. But many times when we are persistent, and we have experienced failure in the past, those ghosts of past failures will revisit us. And so change our attitude towards failure and look at every past failure as a dress rehearsal preparing you for your success. So folks, those are some keys today. We're going to spend some more time on this, but these are some keys to help you become more persistent and achieve the things that you desire quicker and more effectively. So once again, this is Dr. Herbert Harris, and thank you for joining us on Success at Supper Time. Our readings are based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. Be sure to like our broadcast, make some comments, and share it with at least three other people. Check out our website, herbertharris.com. We have some new stuff coming down the pipe, so be sure to fill out the contact sheet on our website so that we'll be able to keep you in the loop. In any event, remember this, you can be what you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. You can have anything you desire, always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is. All right, the music will take us on out. <laughs> I tell you, one of the things that I love about music is that music creates a vibration within you that inspires you to be more, to do more, to have more, and to take action. So the song that we are playing now is one of my own songs by Dr. H, and it's called The Time to Love is Here. So let's listen to a little bit of it as we close out today. <laughs> here we go. All right, let's go now. Come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these troubled days be done. I tell you, come on, everybody. Come on, everyone. The time to love is here. Let these troubled days be done. All right, folks. See you tomorrow morning, Wednesday at 8 a.m. for Wisdom Wednesday. With Wisdom Wednesday with Dr. Herbert Harris and Dr. J talking about brilliant ideas that can transform your life. Remember, the best 